I'm Derek Kirk of Effectatron, and today we're gonna to go over colors, color swatches, color palettes. We're gonna do some quick workflow tips to kind of speed up your colors, as well as, I don't know why, but I've created 160 materials that you can download. I'm gonna give away uh, part of these free. So these are a collection of color palettes that are available, that are really popular. These are the, one of the most trending ones that are out there that are put together for you in these really nice matte finishes so that you can just throw those on your materials and have these really nice, pretty color palettes just right off the bat, easy to use, quickly grab and select and drop them in. So this way, I don't know why, but I just kept going. So you've got over 160 different colors to choose from and they are broken up into 32 different color palettes that all go together regardless of what they are like you can look at them and you're like those don't go together and then you throw them on there and you're like oh actually that looks kind of nice so this one's maybe my favorite uh i like that one this one i didn't think what i would like but i do anyway we've got a ton of materials basically i'm going to give away a few for free download link below but then the 160 materials all broken up into 32 different groups of color palettes will be available to buy for just $10. I wanna give them away for free, but I I can't. <laughs> I can't, I need to, I need some money, if I'm honest. Um, so $10 and thank you guys so much, all of you who have downloaded all my other materials and stuff and have supported me and given me some money. You guys are amazing, thank you so much. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at these and we'll see what all we need to do here. So basically, first thing we need to do, let's open up our color palettes here and see what we've got going on. So if we twirl this down here, we see we have all these options here. So what this is, is this is the color wheel. Inside of the color wheel, we have the option of selecting a point, selecting a point that will give us a complementary color. We have the multiple complementary colors. We've got four colors and we've got five this one, I'm not sure why you would use this one. I don't know what, what this one is really. You've got the square option here, which gives you this gradient ramp to choose from rather than the color wheel, if you're more used to that. And then this option here is a photo where you can bring in a photo and just pick the colors from your photo, which is pretty cool. So if there's something you like the colors of, just go ahead and grab that in there and pick that because a lot of times trying to use this color picker, if you have like just one screen or like minimizing, you can like squish this window down and try to like pick off screen uh, it gets kind of weird. So you can just bring in that photo right here. So if you, even if it's something you just find on the web and you just like the way this website looks, you know, print screen, open that up in paint or Photoshop, whatever, paste it, bring that in. That way you have that image. You can just click in here and then you can just click those colors for you. Next we have RGB. We've got hue, saturation, and value. And you've got KT, T, T, M, I. And you know, if you're gonna, if you know what color space you need, you're gonna, you're gonna know what these are already. But just in case you didn't know that you had these options, you do. This is the color mixer, so you can start mixing between two different colors. Uh, this is gonna use your your different colors that you select, and you can just mix between the two. And then we've got hex codes, which is what I like to use the most. And then you've got color swatches. Now, one thing I will say: if you have hex codes, and then you click this button here. This is the linear numeric values button. So if you need those, click that. Um, I don't really know exactly when you need to use this, but I don't do a lot of design stuff. So I'm sure if you, you know you need to use linear numeric values, you know when to use them. So here's this option. But one thing to note is if you have this on, your hex codes just change. And if you copy and paste in a hex code, like, okay, so you have it at website, you copy the hex code, you have linear numeric values on, you paste that hex code in there, it's not gonna be the right color. And that's because they're just different, okay? So I was very confused because I was copying, pasting hex codes in, and my colors weren't matching. And that's because I had linear numeric values on. So just, you know, keep an eye out for that. Make sure that's off if you're gonna use uh, hex codes and you're, you know, from a website or something like that. Okay, so now we have all these created. So what we can do is we can go into color swatches and we can start basically if we have our hex code open here and our color swatch is open, hold shift and select multiple windows to multi open up multiple windows, control click to close them. So we've got our hex code here and our color swatches here. So once you have your color, you can just drag this down and you can say global if you want it to be stored uh, across multiple projects or you can say local and we can like name this like palette one. 
or something. And so then you can just paste in your, your next hex code or choose a different color and grab that, drag that in, and then you can have all of these. So then once you have those selected, you can go to your asset browser and actually um, just have this selected and say save palette. And that's gonna put that in your asset browser for you if you want it, which is pretty cool. But keep in mind, it does not limit it to the one you have selected which is very confusing. So if we had another palette with another folder here, we say save palette and we say, okay, it brings those both in, which is kind of stupid. So if you're gonna try to save your color palettes here, um, have, you gotta do one at a time. It's really annoying. And you can't uh, have your global saved. So you have to hold control, click and drag and make a copy of your global and then you can save it. So saving color palettes is and swatches is kind of really annoying, which is why I've kind of just created the materials for you so that you can actually just do that because that's going to be a lot easier to do. Okay, so that's kind of an overview of a quick overview of how to do colors and stuff. So basically what we have going on in here is we have used two websites, two resources that I think are awesome for colors. One, I've mentioned in a tutorial before is coolers.co and basically coolers.co has a bunch of things that are really awesome. You can start a generator and just hit spacebar, change different color palettes. It'll instantly give you color palettes that look good. If you like a certain color and you don't like the others, you just lock that color in, keep hitting spacebar and it's going to give you matching colors and you can keep doing that until you find all the ones you like. So you have a really nice color palette here. Also, they have the option to explore trending palettes. And here we have all of these palettes and we can organize them by, if we click up here in the search bar, we can organize them by trending, latest and the most popular. So I've given you many of these palettes selected inside of the uh, assets that you can download from me. I've already created most of these, so they're pretty cool. And the other, so this is a really amazing, cool free resource. This is like what I would say I like the way this works and basically all you need to do is inside of your material you've got your hex code value here open up your scene and all you gotta do is click the color and that instantly copies the hex code for you so then you can just paste that go back click the next color drag that down paste the next color drag that down paste the next color drag that down paste the next color so you do that and that is how i created all of these um so yes it took a while but again that's why i'm giving them to you so you don't have to do that. But the other resource is another free to use resource uh, is called Adobe Color. So basically Adobe Color has the same kind of thing. Basically if we go to Adobe Color, we can create different things. We can go to explore, which is what I like to do. And you have all these images and they have color palettes from them. And you're like, oh, okay, so you can click your color palettes and copy, you know, do the exact same thing we did in the other way as well, you can also create a library and things like that. If you like to create a collection, you can go to sources, color themes, the most popular, and then color themes. And you can say all time this month, this week. So I've given you a collection of these as well. Some of the most popular of all time, as well as this month and stuff. These are all available inside the download. So there you go. That's how you can find some really nice, cool colors, copy the hex code, paste them in, click and drag that down to create your swatches. And then you'll have your color swatches here. One last tip is inside of the material editor, what you can do for colors is it always defaults like this, no matter what it's, everything's collapsed and you're good like this. But if you're doing a lot of things where you're creating a lot of colors, you don't want to have to twirl this down every time, open up each of these every single time. You want to have like a default settings and you want to have your color wheel, most likely probably your hex code and definitely your color swatches if you create those. So in order to have these open up every time we open up a material, all you need to do is go to edit, preference, go down to units, and inside the color chooser, we have all kinds of options of what we want to have on by default. And we want the hexadecimal on and the color swatches on for sure. And secondly, we want to make sure we have store last loadout on. So this way, if we have this up, we've selected some things and we're going to make this when we open up our next material, it's already going to be open. 
So we're going to be able to just open that up and have that there for us. If we close this because we're done, now when we open up the next one, it's going to be closed. So if you want to work from one thing to the next easier, we can just leave that open and it'll store that workflow for us. This is just a little tip on how to speed up your workflow and some things that just make life a little bit easier for yourself, especially when you're making a lot of materials or something like that. And then once you have your materials created, browser, all you need to do is right click and create a category. I created a category of matte colors. And so then once you have your colors selected, you can or created, you can just save those and bring those in and just hit OK and it will create your library for you. So once if you have a bunch of palettes that you've created, bring those in and you can create them. Or if you have the ones I downloaded and you want to add to it for your own collection and you have like a certain color palette that you want to use a lot, like if you're doing something for brand colors, stuff like that, go ahead and create those, drag those in. And they don't have to be this matte finish that I've created, but you can, the, it works no matter what, okay? Uh, to download, sorry, to import the assets from my download all you need to do is go up here in your asset browser go to create go to import assets and you just click that zip folder and that will automatically throw that into the uncategorized section and this is where you can right click down here when you have nothing selected and create a category and then you can just copy and paste from there copy everything out of the uncategorized paste it into the new folder <clears throat> and that's how you'll have this so you'll have access to all of these color palettes and they're labeled S1 through 1.4 and these all go together. T1 through 1.4 all go together. AA through AA 1.4 all go together, that kind of thing. So you get the, but they don't have fun names. Uh, I just wanted them to be make sure that they stayed together for you so it's easy to know when the start of a color palette was and the end of a color palette was. So again, these are all the color palettes that you're going to get with that download. So be sure to click the links below to check these out. Real quick, I just want to say be sure to check out DerekKirk.net for all of my content and check out our courses on CG Shortcuts and my courses on Skillshare. All of these are going to be updated with new content as well with the new big changes with Redshift. So be sure to stay tuned uh, and check those out. Thank you all so much for watching. See you next time.